And I don't believe God plays games with our vocation. Hello, my name is Father Columba. Today I wanted to talk to you about being single, uh, not just, you know, because I'm waiting to figure out if I'm going to be, a, you know, religious or going to be married or a priest or something. Being single because you actually feel called to be single. It's an actual, as an actual vocation. And then the question, like, is it possible to be, to become really holy? Like, do we have examples of this? My thoughts on this are, it's a terrible shame to opt for a vocation by default. I'd much rather, like, if things are going to work out that I'm going to be single for the rest of my life, I'm, I'm thinking maybe the Lord probably has a plan there and I could ask him just as I could for the other vocations. And, and I don't believe God plays games with our vocation. Sometimes at the March for Life in America, I would see these big uh, banners and things of um, the seminarians for life meaning they're pro-life. It was funny because it looked like they were going to be seminarians forever. <laughs> they should have just said that. Seminarians forever! Okay, no, no, God doesn't want seminarians to remain seminarians. They are in that, that, that situation because they're getting trained to become priests, whether they discern to become priests or not. Well, they're not going to get to stay in the seminary forever. That would be incredibly expensive and painful. And so too, God doesn't want us in uh, vocation discernment forever. So then too, with uh, the single life, I think, it, you know, the Lord does, I think, call people to this. The catechism actually talks about this. I'm going to pick up my catechism now and I'm going to read from it. I don't know it off by heart. I don't know it off by heart. Get off my case. Oh my gosh. Paragraph 2231. It says, some forego marriage in order to care for their parents or brothers and sisters, to give themselves more completely to a profession or to serve other honorable ends they can contribute greatly to the good of the human family. So this is the church recognizing that this is something that people do discern and that they do have a call to, and that it is, if you noticed, it talks there about different means of self-gift. And that's really the most important thing. Our vocation in general is to love. Therefore, it is to make a gift of ourselves to others, to God. So whatever the vocation is, it should be some way that I can give myself away because without that, I'm not going to fulfill what it means to be human and to be a Christian. There's also a really nasty, ugly way to do that where we're, we just are full of resentment, can be, because we can feel left out. So as, as scripture says, if we're going to do it, do it freely, do it joyfully with any sacrifice uh, or don't do it find is there another way to do this is there another way to you know look after your parents or uh, whatever else so if we are going to do it to do it freely that will be the thing that will be most pleasing to the lord so looking after parents looking after brothers and sisters for a pr for a profession some people for their art for their you know academic studies for their whatever they feel this call and not just because i want to get filthy rich so i have no time for kids no time for marriage whatever i'm just going to make fat cash. Okay, that's not what the catechism and the church is talking about, obviously. So uh, this is something to be discerned. This is something that I think God wants to speak clearly to. I mean, if you end up there, surely he could have made that clear maybe years before, and then we could have been really at peace. Like, you know what? I really don't feel the call to marriage. And that shouldn't be, I'm afraid of marriage. I'm afraid of having kids. There should be this acceptance and good, seeing that marriage is beautiful and good. And yeah, if I did have that call to it, I would love to do that. Anyone who, for example, tries to join a religious community or the priesthood or, you know, who are like, oh no, marriage, mm, no, 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 no. In the sense of not having an attraction and a desire for it, that's actually a big red flag. If you're wondering what that means, a big red flag means you're probably not going to work in a religious life or the priesthood because it's it's the basic natural vocation. Natural vocation is marriage. And we should have a desire for it. We should be able to see how beautiful it is and how good it is. I would love, I would love to be married and have kids if that's what the Lord had called me to and if that's where my heart's desire really was. I can recognize how beautiful it is and also how incredibly difficult it is. So when you're discerning your vocation, along with other things, and this isn't, I'm just really focusing on the single life today. Uh, we can I'll maybe look at doing a, a proper discernment, discerning your vocation talk another time. But just on that one, like, yeah, throw, throw this in as a topic of discernment for your um, discernment of your vocation. 
Am I called to be single for the Lord? Mm -mm. Am I called to be a consecrated virgin under my bishop? If you're going to do it, guys, if it's going to happen anyway, why not do it for Jesus, right? Go for it. Now, all of that, oh my gosh, so I haven't told you about Ray. I want to tell you about Ray Dambrowski. Ray was single. He was really, really practical, super helpful. And he was kind of like a one man um, St. Vincent de Paul. His garage, well, his garage, his garage was full of like furniture and stuff that people in the parish would give him, he would gather it up. And then whenever somebody new moved into the parish, it was a new couple or somebody and they needed stuff, Father Marius would call up Ray. Ray, I got a guy. Ray got, Father, just send him around. Don't send him around to me. I'll, I'll sort them out. No, no problem, Father. Yeah, and he just served. And he, he was a regular attender at Mass and prayerful and just a really, really loving guy and gave himself an incredible self-gift. Okay, so fast forward, Father Marius joins our community. Community and, and Ray at that point then is, uh, we went to visit him. Father Marius brought me, I was just in my 20s, young friar, bring me to see Ray. Ray was in a care home and he wasn't doing so well, like he was in pain. He had this like this skin condition where his skin was super sensitive. So even just to the clothing, uh, I'm rubbing on his skin was really painful. I didn't know this. We wouldn't know it to talk to him. Father Marius told me this. So Ray in the care home, again, he just lived this life of self-gift. He spent his days, even though he was in a lot of pain, just visiting all the other patients. I'd be in my, in my I'd be in my bed. Oh, nurse, help me. You know, trying to pray, but probably complaining that I can't pray. Ray is up and out suffering, but visiting everyone else. Yeah, especially the ones who weren't getting visited by their family. Really beautiful. So he'd spend his time visiting them and visiting Jesus in, in the chapel because it was run by some religious nuns and it was, there was a little chapel there in the care home. Really beautiful. And we'd go in and talk to Ray and uh, just total salt of the earth kind of guy. But the stuff he would sometimes say was so profound. And it was some of the most profound stuff I've ever heard, but it was still like rough. <laughs> earthy. But I just experienced God so much. It's like, oh, we're going to see Ray. <gasps> and the brothers would like want to be going, well, oh, we're going to see Ray. Because when he would speak, when you would meet him, it was, he was like, a saint like I really think this guy was super super holy and he was single for the Lord and just cared for people and went to mass. One of the holiest guys I know ever met. So single for the Lord is a real thing guys. Maybe the Lord's calling you to it. Don't be afraid to say yes with all your heart. Ray said yes to it with all his heart. Recognize it as the gift from God that it was. He was free to love some of the people that no priest could reach, no married person could reach. He was available like almost nobody else in his parish. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful vocation. Maybe it's the one for you. Hope this is helpful. God bless you. Bye-bye.